You know what they say, a new year, a new small sat launch company trying to achieve orbit. This time, it's Firefly Aerospace and their new rocket, the Firefly Alpha. In today's video, I'm going to get a little bit into the history of Firefly, and I'm also going to talk about the capabilities of their new Firefly Alpha rocket, and why I actually think it has a good chance at becoming competitive in today's ever-competitive launch market. The story of Firefly Aerospace starts in 2014, when it was actually called Firefly Space Systems and was founded by Tom Markusic, PJ King, and Michael Bloom. In the past, Tom Markusic had worked for both SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic. But before the company could really get off the ground, it was sued by Virgin Galactic, who alleged that Markusic illegally provided intellectual property to Alpha, and these accusations included Markusic actually destroying storage devices, disposing of computers, and reformatting hard drives to cover the tracks of his misappropriation of Virgin Galactic information. In 2016, an independent arbitrator confirmed Markusic had stolen intellectual property from Virgin Galactic, and shortly thereafter, a major investor pulled out, not because of the litigation, apparently, but because of Brexit. I'm sure everyone here believes that. So 2016 ended with Firefly Space System stopping all engineering work and selling their assets on the public auction. But this is where the second man in Firefly Aerospace's story comes in. Max Polyakov. He's a Ukrainian investor who started multiple successful internet companies and even got a couple listed on the London Stock Exchange. He brought his money to the table and acquired Firefly Space Systems and renamed it Firefly Aerospace to be held under his holding company, Neosphere Ventures. Since then, I think Firefly has done a really good job of getting a launcher to market. Unlike Blue Origin and Virgin Orbit, Firefly Aerospace is headed by an investor who has vision and is dedicated to the Firefly Aerospace project, much in the same way that Elon Musk is dedicated, dedicated. to seeing SpaceX succeed. Unlike other small sat companies, Firefly is actually planning on making a larger class of boosters than their current one. This shows that they have a vision and are just using Firefly Alpha as an initial step to their long-term plans for the space launch sector. Now, I want to get into Firefly's plans for both the Firefly Alpha rocket and beyond. The Firefly rocket is propelled by four Reaver 1 engines running on liquid oxygen and RP-1, with a pretty unique tap-off engine cycle, which is kind of similar to an open cycle engine where a small percentage of the cryogenic propellants are routed to a small combustion chamber where they combust and spin a turbine. But in the tap-off cycle, a small percentage of the actual combustion gases that are produced in the real thrust chamber are diverted to spin a turbine, kind of cutting out the middleman and leading to a more efficient engine which runs at a 295.6 specific impulse. Now is when I should note that the Firefly Alpha is built with an all-carbon fiber construction. This was also planned to be used on SpaceX's ITS and BFR concepts, but was later dropped for the Starship, mostly due to the high cost of prototyping with expensive carbon fiber. Rocket Lab also uses carbon fiber for their Electron rocket, so I really suspect Firefly is on the right path with this one. Now the second stage is powered by only one Lightning 1 running on LOX and RP1 in a pressure fed configuration getting about 322 seconds of specific impulse. But I think the most important part of the Firefly rocket is its payload because the Firefly rocket offers some of the largest payload capacities in the small sat launch market. They offer 1000 kilograms to a low earth orbit with a 28 degree inclination and a 200 kilometer apogee and perigee. And they also offer 600 kilograms to a 600 kilometer sun synchronous orbit. These numbers are huge compared to the roughly 350 kilograms that Electron is offering. One thing that might hinder Firefly Aerospace is the fact that they don't have any immediate plans for reusing their Firefly Alpha. So, while this isn't really a drawback in the small sat launch market, I really think that with Electron moving towards reusability and the ever increasing downward pressure from rideshare options on larger commercial rockets, 
means that I think Firefly needs to find a way to start to reuse their rockets. And while that almost definitely won't happen on the Firefly Alpha with its four Reaver engines, I think Firefly Aerospace has a good shot of reusing their prospective Firefly Beta. The Firefly Beta is just a scaled up Firefly Alpha. It's got five Reaver 2 engines on the core stage, which is a much more favorable configuration for reusability, since the center engine can relight on the landing burn and allow for more margins on your hover slam. But the main draw to the Firefly Beta is its 8,000 kilogram payload. Yeah, you heard me right, 8,000. So this is going to be a real competitor to some of the payloads now launched on larger rockets. Let's not forget that this is a round equivalent to the original payload capacity of the Block 1 Falcon 9s. So what we're seeing is a company trying to incrementally increase its payload capacity, not doing something like Blue Origin, where they're going from the tiny New Shepard to the massive New Glenn, which I guess they can afford to do because they've always got Bezos paying the bills. But for someone like Firefly Aerospace, I think it's a much better strategy to move incrementally, much like SpaceX has done. So I really am confident in Firefly's ability to continue to be a competitor, even though the small set launch market really is looking like a dangerous market to be in right now. And if that wasn't enough, we're also seeing Firefly diversify into other areas of the space market. They're producing the Genesis Moonlander. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. They're going to be cooperating with Israel Aerospace Industries, the makers of the Bereshit lander which crash landed on the moon last year. This lander is going to be filed under the Commercial Lunar Payload Services contract, and they're going to try to have their lander ready to launch by quarter four of 2022. Again, I'm really looking forward to this. It's really cool how Firefly is diversifying its income streams. Speaking of diversifying income streams, Firefly is getting into the SUV market. No, not the cars, but space utility vehicle. The space utility vehicle is going to be Firefly's answer to Rocket Lab's Proton. Space utility vehicle is going to be a lot like the Proton. It's going to be a detachable mini satellite slash orbital tug that's powered by solar electric propulsion and has the capability to stay with payloads on orbit for up to five years. But it can also be used as a kick stage, which can bring 600 kilograms to geostationary orbit and 500 kilograms to lunar orbit. So this means we could be seeing Firefly launching 500 kilograms to lunar orbit on their Firefly Alpha rocket. They'll also have the capability to launch multiple payloads to multiple lunar orbits, thanks to the incredibly high ISP of their ion propulsion system. If you couldn't tell, I'm really excited to see what Firefly Aerospace can accomplish in these next coming years. And I think I join all of you when I wish them good luck on their upcoming orbital test and wish all of you a happy new year. Thank you all. This is Cosplus Content, signing off.